Hello, my name is Hans van der Quast, lecturer at IHG Delft Institute for Water Education. In this lecture I'm going to show you what digital elevation models are that we use in GIS. After this lecture you'll be able to define what is a DEM, a DTM or a DSM. To describe different methods of DEM acquisition. To give examples how DEMs can be used and to describe what data can be derived from DEMs. Digital elevation models can be defined as DTMs, digital terrain models, where we only consider the terrain surface. This is often used in catchment hydrology where we want to route water over the terrain in the catchment. The digital surface model, however, is the DTM plus all natural and human-made features on top of it, such as trees and buildings, as we can see on the picture. This is often useful for hydraulic modeling. Here we see a digital surface model of the city center of Rotterdam, where we used a 50 centimeter elevation model and aerial photographs draped over it. We can also generate a digital surface model based on vector data. In that case, the building shapes are much clearer than uh, when we use raster, but we don't have the information of the texture of the buildings. This is data from Rotterdam uh, based on city GML data that can freely be downloaded from the internet. So how do we acquire DEMs? Well, the traditional way is using ground surveying where we extrapolate from a known XYZ point to other locations where we accurately measure the position using a theodolite. This requires very skilled uh, people and it's also very laborious to cover a large area, especially in uh, mountains as you can see on the picture. And in the end all these points need to be interpolated if we want to use it as a continuous raster in, for example, hydrological modeling. A more digital way is using a differential GPS. There we use satellite information to determine our position very accurately in combination with a base station. And uh, in this way we can get centimeter accuracy. Uh, but still the points need to be uh, surveyed and it's a lot of uh, work to interpolate uh, these points to a continuous raster to be used in modeling. Another traditional way is to use stereo photogrammetry. On the picture you see a stereoscope and you see a stereo pair of uh, aerial photographs. They have an overlap. In the overlapping area we can see through this device in uh, 3D. And there are special rulers that we can use to uh, measure the elevation of points we see on the, on the photographs. Of course that's also very uh, laborious and uh, you need uh, good skills to do that. And then you in some way need to digitize those points to get uh, a raster out of it. Also very laborious is uh, digitizing contour lines, so many maps have contour lines printed on it and we can use uh, uh, a device to digitize uh, these contour lines, a lot of manual work, and then we can interpolate those contour lines to uh, a raster that we can use in the models. A more modern way is to use uh, LiDAR or laser altimetry. With this method, the laser scanner is uh, mounted to an aircraft and uh, it sends pulses to the earth which are uh, reflected back and the reflection, the time difference of the reflection is recorded and from that together with GPS information and the rotation of the plane we can derive the elevation of the surface. This generates uh, a lot of very accurate points which need to be uh, post-processed and also interpolated to get uh, a raster. If we don't have uh, access to all these uh, uh, other uh, acquisition methods, we can always use the radar interferometry method. Um, there has been the shuttle radar topography mission, I'll talk more about it later, which acquired uh, a lot of uh, data, almost full coverage of the, the Earth at a, an acceptable resolution for uh, catchment modeling, for example. So how do we use DEMs? We can use DMs to determine the catchment area and to delineate drainage networks, which is covered in a separate video. We can calculate slopes. We can calculate the aspect, which is the orientation of slopes according to the compass direction. That's very useful uh, for applications where we want to know the amount of solar energy that is received by a slope. So north slopes versus south slopes, for example. 
We can use DEMs to identify geological structures because when there are abrupt changes in the elevation uh, it's an indication of a change in geo geology. We can use it for view shed analysis. View sheds are uh, the areas that can be seen from a point or to determine which point you can see from a certain area. Very useful for uh, military uh, purposes or for uh, spatial planning. Another use of DEMs is orthorectification. Orthorectification is the georeferencing of uh, aerial photographs or satellite images where we take into account uh, the relief displacement that is uh, an effect of, uh, of these kind of images. We can also use obviously DEMs for 3D simulations like uh, landslides, mass movements. We can use it for change analysis and we can use it to create contour maps. I will illustrate the use of DEMs using an example from the French Alps. This is an area near digne les bains where uh, our students from IHC Delft uh, in the specialization hydrology do their fieldwork. During this fieldwork, the students have to study the hydrological processes in their own study areas, their catchments. Prior to going to the fieldwork, it can be useful to study first the digital elevation models of those catchments in order to understand the relation between hydrology and elevation differences. It can help them in understanding better their study area and to prepare their sampling strategy while they are in the field. Also, when coming back from the field, a digital elevation model can help them in further interpretation of the study area. Here we look at the digital elevation model in the form of a raster. Each cell represents an elevation value, and we use a color ramp to give the different elevations different colors. Note that this is a continuous raster without sharp boundaries, and therefore ramps are used. Also make sure that you use intuitive colors. So blue is normally associated with low areas as well as green, while the darker colors or even white for snow are associated with higher areas. We can also calculate the hill shade in a GIS. In this case an artificial light source illuminates the scene. Normally the light source is put in the northwest, which doesn't exist in reality. However, if we put it in the southeast for example, this will give an inverted relief as you can see in the animation. A nice visualization trick is to combine this raster DEM with a hill shade. And in that case we get this more dramatic view. We can either use transparency, but more impressive is it to use the blending if your software supports this. This is made in QGIS. Elevation data can also be visualized using contour lines. Contour lines can also be derived from DEM rasters. The contour lines are formed by connecting locations with the same elevation. This is done with a certain equidistance, the elevation difference between two lines. Can you see what is used in this case? Here an equidistance of 50 meter is used. What we can also see in a contour line map is when the lines are close together that the area is very steep and when they widen further apart that it gets less steep. So we can interpret also the shapes of the landscape from a contour line map. We can also visualize elevation in so-called 2.5D. It's not real 3D because then we need special devices, but the effect of 3D is created by perspective and by shading. In a GIS we can also visualize this in animations, which gives us further insight in the study area. Besides looking at the color of a DEM, we can also drape an orthophoto or a satellite image over the DEM, like in this case. And here we see the animation of the area around digne les bains where we can further interpret the shape of the hills, the geomorphology for hydrological applications. In a GIS we can also calculate the slope from DEMs. We can choose between slope in degrees or in percentage. Here we have calculated it in degrees and we have blended the result with the hill shade to better interpret the results and the color scale from blue to red. The more red it is, the steeper the slope. 
Another layer that we can derive from digital elevation models is the aspect. Aspect is the orientation of the slope and usually uh, reflected in compass direction. Note that in this case we need a circular or directional legend where north and south and east and west are opposite. The aspect is a useful map because the orientation of the slope determines the amount of solar radiation that is received by the slope and that affects the hydrology and uh, growth of vegetation for example which also affects erosion and weathering. In this example we see a view shed. We have calculated the areas that are visible from the center of digne les -Bains. These are indicated in red. We can also derive more complex things from DEMs by applying equation. One example is the topographic wetness index, which is a function of the upslope contributing area divided by the tangent of the slope and then the natural logarithm of it. It indicates, as you can see in the layer, which areas are dry and which are expected to be wetter. A GIS also comes with a lot of analysis tools, such as creating transects. In this example we see a transect through an open pit mine and the red line gives uh, the elevation before using the so-called fill sinks algorithm that we use in hydrology which is indicated by the green line. In another video I'll explain how to do the catchment delineation using a GIS. I hope this video was useful for you and you learned a lot about using digital elevation models. If you want to learn more, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or go to gisopencourseware.org to see more free materials and links to uh, the courses that we give at IHC Delft.